Sebastian, where is the report? The EBC said it was sent to the candidate. But general elections come in. And the elections have gone through the report for the upcoming general elections. So the leader of the opposition wrote to the EBC. Dear EBC, where is it? Lose your job, and they target you for speaking out. You don't have to be a UNC, you know. Once you speak out against the government, that, my brothers and sisters, is dictatorship. And when the EBC continues to operate in a way that we cannot have confidence in them, and then they hug up the PNM, and the PNM in turn gets the EBC report and gone home with it, we have to ask, can we truly expect free and fair elections in Trinidad and Tobago. I can tell you, we are in St. Augustine constituency. We border St. Joseph constituency, where the PNM only won by 800 votes. And we border St. Joseph, St. Tunapuna constituency, where the people there are ready to vote out the PNM. And the EBC is likely to have gotten instructions to change the boundaries to suit them. I don't put it past them because the CEO of that EBC is a close relative of a PNM, former PNM minister. And they have been working hand in hand. So I don't want us to be fooled. But in the last local government election and the last general election 2020, Remember in 2020, we were still in the pandemic. And they allowed us to campaign. They allowed people to go and vote. We had all the COVID protocols. But when we asked for independent observers, you know what they said? Uh oh, it's COVID. We can't have observers. Ezekiel step in. Uh oh, we can't do that. So that was 2020. In the last local government election, 2023, we asked for observers once again. Oh, oh, we can't bring the observers. Tonight, 
I am calling on the government to put independent observers in place for the next general election. We do not trust the PNM. We, the EBC has proven that they cannot be trusted. And we want to ensure that every citizen, man and woman, in both Trinidad and Tobago, get the opportunity to vote. Because we know that more and more people are ready and willing to vote out the PNM. And the only way... The only way we could have a little more confidence in the electoral process is for independent observers to be here. But I want to put you on your guard from now. We must ensure that when they are registering people, we must all be vigilant. We must not have next door to us five people registered and only two people living. Because then you will have people being registered where they're not supposed to vote. You will have PNM all of a sudden getting big, big votes and you want to know where all them people live in. We have seen that before. And I don't put it past the PNM and past the EBC for that to happen again. So I call on every citizen in Trinidad and Tobago to be vigilant to ensure that we protect our democracy. And I call again on the government of Trinidad and Tobago to invite independent observers for the next general election. My brothers and sisters, let us go forward in victory. Long live Kamala Prasad Bisesa. Victory to the United National Congress. I thank you. Let's give it up once more for MP Khadija Amin. Good night to our dear political leader and to our Karini East family, our host this afternoon, MP Rishi Sicharan. For those of you who are visiting and may not be very familiar with the geography of this area, after this meeting, I want to invite you as you step out, look to your left and you will see a beautiful building, a beautiful building. That is the ECCE Center, the Early Childhood Care Center for our children of Ragunan and Rodan environs. That is a pretty new building. And I want you all to know how that building came about to be. It came about to be because of the vision of our dear political leader, Mrs. Kamala Passad Bisesa. Let's give her a round of applause. And our then member of parliament, Dr. The Honorable Tim Gopi Singh, was not only the member of parliament for Karen East, but he was the minister of education. So the Ragunanan Road people would have benefited from the vision of Kamala Passad Bisesa back when she was Prime Minister. And it is our job to ensure that she goes back as Prime Minister when the next election is called. Yeah. Just a bit higher up the road, if you were to venture east along the Ragunanan Road, you would see beautiful lights illuminating the recreation ground. That came about because of the People's Partnership Government led by Kamala Passad Bisesa. And you would see a play park for the children of Ragunanan Road and environs. That is what Ragunanan Road uh, benefited from Kamala Passad Bisesa. This afternoon, before I introduce our next speaker, I want to say um, a special good night to our dear principal from the Ragunanan Road Primary School, Miss Salisha Ramsing. I want you to give her a round of applause. She's always very much cooperative and she works along well with MPC Charan and his Karen East team. And she works along well with the local government representative in this area who's speaking to you right now. And she does an excellent job for the children of Ragunan and Road. So a special good night to our principal. And I also want to recognize my good friend, Mr. Jimmy Joseph, who is in the back in a, a different colored jersey tonight. But it's not his fault. And I see Mr. Silcott, our hard-working resident from Ragunanan Road, who are in charge of the sports club in Ragunanan Road, and they keep the youths together. I needed to mention them this afternoon. Our next speaker, very dynamic young man, a good friend of mine, He's a hard-working UNC representative for Carney Central. He possesses an LLB from the University of London, an MBA from Edinburgh Business School, a legal practice certificate at the University, University of Staffordshire and a BSc in Electrical and Computer Engineering from the University of the West Indies in St. Augustine. Our next speaker has been a strong supporter and a defender of the party since its inception and has served on the party's national executive. 
He has been a partner at the Orient's Law Chamber and has worked as a senior manager at TSTT, an operations engineer at TNTech, an engineer in training at Plepdeco, and a site superintendent at Franklin and Errol Electrical Services. He also served as a member of the board of directors of Petrotrin between 2010 and 2015. He has also worked entry-level roles at the University of the West Indies in Augustine, Carib Glass Works, and Ramdas Transport Limited. He has served as the UWE Guild President and received a number of awards recognizing his efforts in student governance, cricket, and football. Let's give a hearty welcome to our next speaker, MP for Karani Central, MP Anul Ram. Thank you, Chairman Ryan Rampasad, for that wonderful. All right, let's stand and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. All right, so let's stand and welcome our honorable political leader, Kamala Pasad Bisesa, as she make her way to this grand meeting at the Raghunanan Road Government Primary School in the constituency of Karani Central. Karani East, sorry. Very close to Karani Central. Under Dr. Rishi Sicharan who is your member of parliament. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and let's welcome the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisesa. meeting and greeting persons on the outside, I'll ask you to take your seat and I will continue with my presentation this evening. And very shortly, as she make her way to this grand meeting, you'll have an opportunity to meet the leader. So thank you very much, Chairman Rampasad, for that wonderful introduction. Our Ill illustrious, brilliant and esteemed political leader, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Sessa, our deputy political leaders, Members of the parliament, members of parliament, senators, firehouse speakers on the platform here this evening, our national executive members, members of the media, together with so many of you who are viewing this presentation online, I say a pleasant good evening to you all. Karen East, how are you all feeling this evening? Are you ready to hit the streets campaigning? And are you ready for a general election? All right. So brothers and sisters, there are a number of issues I'd like to bring to you to your attention this evening. As we see a government that is hell-bent on filling and lining their pockets at the expense of all citizens of this country, the working class, against the poor, against the vulnerable, and all and sundry. We see a government that has lost all moral compass to govern and a prime minister who just cannot discipline his cabinet colleagues for their ineptitude, for their incompetence, and for their corruption. The government ministers, their friends, their families, and their financiers are literally fighting each other for contracts 
as they know their time in office will be short-lived. We are now hearing numerous rumors of what actually took place at the, uh, at the arson attack at HSM in Chase Village. It has to do with the awards of contract or the non-award or the cancellation of contracts at a land settlement agency and a fight amongst two cabinet colleagues. I am sure we will get more insight into this in the coming days and weeks and keep you informed. Recently, there was a story in the Trinidad Guardian with respect to a government minister getting a number of contract, contracts at the Housing Development Corporation. According to Guardian Media report, on Monday, 25th September 2023, the Kuva Tabaki Telparo Regional Corporation was being requested to clean up the mess being left or undone by a company called Pical Services Limited, a, com a company purported to be owned by Minister Foster Cumming. The company was not servicing the community in the Kuva area in relation to the disposal of garbage and bulk waste in the community. The residents and the school administration were constantly calling the councillor, they were calling the chairman and the CTTRC to assist with garbage collection and bulk disposal. In good conscience, the CTTRC did what it had to do. They continued to serve as Kamala Basar, Bissessa, have all our councillors and MPs do. They, they did what they had to do because of certain health concerns raised by the public health department. However, what is most instructive and obscene about this entire arrangement is the number of contracts that has been awarded to this very same firm and the number of extensions granted over years for contracts awarded between 20 16 to 2017 and we have senator Jillian john here these contracts are normally awarded for two to three years they have they have extended these contracts and on at least two to three occasions based on when it was awarded and if you look right here in the article cummins contract the grass cutting contract to pical for agc's 500 development was awarded on the 10th of august 2016 and extended to the 31st of December 2024. The grass cutting at AGC's Coover Exchange awarded on the same day and again coincidentally extended to 31st of December 2024. There are at least five or six contracts all ending with the same date of the 31st of August 2024. Coincidence much I say to you. These ministers they are lining their pockets, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you all remember that two family-owned companies of this minister was a subject of a special branch report which was being investigated by the Financial Intelligence Bureau. Tonight, I ask you to stand as we welcome the Honorable Kamala Pasadi Sessor.
myself For our political leader and Dr. Gregory Bissasa. So as I, I was telling you ladies and gentlemen, you all remember that two family owned companies of this minister was a subject of a special branch report which was being investigated by the Financial Intelligence Bureau. Tonight I ask, I ask the Commissioner of Police, what is the status of the investigation which was started by your predecessor? Because according to this article, you ask for an update upon assuming office. And that is what is taking place in this country, ladies and gentlemen. And we have told you time and time again about the recusal twins, Farris and Stewart. Well, I have news for you. Others are also lining their pockets as well. In the article dated the 21st of March 2024, the Minister of Tourism, Randall Mitchell, confirmed confirmed that he has an interest in the building that houses Pan Trimbego headquarters at number 55 Dundonald Street in Port of Spain. So apparently, these ministers, they have a thing for renting buildings. In this case, however, from what I understand from the article, the minister has an interest in the building that was leased to a third party. That third party is now renting the building to Pan Trimbego for a whooping $50,000 a month. This entire arrangement makes me want to stoops like Randall. Let's give Randall a stoops. <laughs> so I have a few questions for Randall Mitchell. Did you use your position to orchestrate this rental? When did you become aware that Pan Trimbego was going to rent this building? And finally and most importantly, is Pan Trinbego the recipient of any sponsorship and or advances from the ministry under your charge? I have those questions for Randall Mitchell. So while many of our fellow citizens are struggling to make ends meet, living in poverty and fearing for their lives at mis escalating crime level, cabinet members are busy renting their buildings instead of serving you. And you know what is? Most obscene about this whole entire thing, tell me. For these buildings, they do not have to pay property tax. It's you and I who have to pay property tax. And MP Tanku has been telling you about that. There's another issue which I want to raise on this platform here this evening. And it has to do with the, with the Strategic Services Agency. And I make a pronouncement that what the PNM cannot eat, they will destroy. They eat out the treasury close to $500 billion from 2015 to present with little or nothing to show for it. They destroy Petrotrin. They destroy Carini 1975 Limited. They destroy Lake Asphalt. Their lack of maintenance are destroying the roads and our vehicles. And now they have destroyed or are destroying the SSA. After they mash up the police ability to fight crime, they now come to destroy this country's premier intelligence gathering agency. Now is a good time to remind people that it was this prime minister who was who's also the chair of the National Security Council who famously said, he said, if this government cannot deal with crime, then the government itself is part of the problem. He said that in 2013. Well, Dr. Rowley, you don't need me to tell you that the PNM is part of the problem. The data and stats will show that crime, that mayhem and murder escalates when the PNM is in government. But that is when he was in opposition. Now that they are in government, you know what the PNM is saying and the Prime Minister is saying? He's saying the country is a violent one and there is no switch to turn off murders and crime. This is him here, the two-faced man, double standards. This is not which side of his mouth to speak from. 2013, while in opposition, 2022 when in government. That is what they are noted for. 
So all of a sudden, tune change. He, the Prime Minister, and his cabinet are not responsible for crime. It's the society to blame. And our leader constantly reminds us of the PNM blame game and their rhetoric with respect to their playbook. The leader constantly, constantly reminds us of that. They take the population for granted. That is what the PNM does whilst they are in office. To add insult to injury or to add insult to an already bad situation, we have a Minister of National Security who is saying what? My duty is not to ensure that people feel safe and secure. That is not his duty. Yes, Fitzgerald Hines, we know that. And that is why your cabinet colleagues mash up the SSA. Let me remind you that under Mr. Manning, the SSA was used to spy on citizens of this country, from politicians to journalists and to sportsmen. So the PNM, they are accustomed of using this country's premier intelligence agency as their doormat. And you all remember that it was, that it was Honorable Kamala Prasad Vicesa that exposed how Mr. Manning used the SSA to spy on citizens. The PNM hounded you. You know who they hounded? They hounded Rishmi Ramnarayan. They led a crusade and crucified Mr. Ramnarayan for months upon months for being a true patriot. Rowley even found an emotion of no confidence in the Prime Minister back then when Rishmi did a deep poll. You all remember that? That is what they did. What say you now, Rowley? What say you now? Under the PNM, under Fitzgerald Hines, you have rogue elements in the SSA who, according to reports, were planning some kind of military launch against the state. This is no laughing matter. Our liberty is at stake. The head of the SSA, Major Best, is an explosive expert and had his fingertips on the world's premier spy software, the Pegasus software from Israel. In the SSA under Rowley and Hines, Major Best hired several church members and their families and recruited several high and medium ranked military officers in their church and the SSA. Imagine a private church was, be was being used where machinery from the army was being used for in a private capacity for the church. Imagine under Fitzgerald Hines and Rowley, the husband of a Coast Guard officer was murdered and media reports suggest he was linked with people to national security apparatus in this country and they killed him not too long after they tried to poison him. So first they tried to poison him and then they committed, they, they executed him on the highway. So imagine this brothers and sisters, we expect this, the state to use the resources to protect us. But no, under Rowley and Hines, this is what they're doing. The state is killing people. How scary is that? This is, this is what is taking place under this PNM. This PNM, who according to the words of doc, Dr. Rowley, is part of the problem. So while the minister could find time on social media to preach and, about hate and racism, the SSA is all but collapsed. And now we have a French group who believe to be planning an armed action against the state, a French group in possession and control of the country's premier intelligence gathering agency. We would expect the government to protect the population from mass murders which happens almost every weekend. Just this weekend, there were five murders on Saturday alone. And then according to one post I saw on Facebook, somebody's asking, where is the widespread outrage? No media scrutiny, no calls for general elections. Anybody else, they were calling for general elections. And brothers and sisters, we would have also hoped that these numbers and these this would have caused some disquiet in the mass media, but no, nothing, zilch. We have to depend on DJ Surf and DJ News for updates on murders, not the newspaper, not the mass media. That is who we have to depend on for these murders. Just last night, not too far from here, a Kunupia man was murdered in a house, in, house robbery. Ladies and gentlemen, the PNM have abdicated their responsibilities to this nation, and it's about time they call the general election. <laughs> in closing, let me remind you of the glory days and let you know there is hope under the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bissessa. I stand here, I stand here and unequivocally affirm my commitment to my party and my leader, and reassure you that our party is well on our way to victory at the next general elections and this is because
of the hard work that we continue to do in all constituency, ably supervised by no other than no other Kamala Prasad Bisa, sir. Let not your heart be troubled, ladies and gentlemen, by those who are destined to see us divided and to create janjat in our party. Remember one strategy of the PNM is to encourage third parties. You all remember Team Unity, you remember the Congress of the People and so on. When their backs are against the wall, their finances invest in a third party. And that is why, that is why it is important for all of us to bind together, to stay united, to stay together, and focus on the task of hand, which is to defeat the People's National Movement. Tonight, as I always say, I am UNC, and I am proud. Brothers and sisters, long live the United National Congress. Long live the Honorable Kamla Prasad Bisesa. For whatever, backward never. I thank you. Come on, give it up for MP and I'll run. Well done, well done. Time for PNM to go. Again, time for PNM to Nice. Woo, give me a great honor and privilege. Look, welcome to our beloved political leader, the best prime minister that this country has ever had. Welcome the Honorable Kamala Bissad Bissessa. I'd like to take this honor on behalf of Dr. Richard Cicheran. We welcome you to the constituency of Karani East. Y'all, for Karani East. I also would like to recognize, you know, the gentleman down to the back with the straw hat. Yes, be Johnny Abraham. Give it up for him. And the rest of members from Parliament. It's an honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Richard Cicheron. He's a very dedicated person. He's a dedicated member of parliament, and he's very caring. As a new councillor and not a new member of UNC, I can tell you this. He is a very caring person. I can call him any time, and he will answer. Dr. Richard Cicheron has served Karen East diligently over many years as the constituency treasurer, secretary, and chairman, rising up to the represent the people of Karen in East at the parliamentary level. Dr. Citron has undertaken many projects within his constituency to assist the vulnerable, homeless, and ensure proper educational opportunities for children of Karen East. Dr. Citron has played an instrumental role in our party's medical clinics, helping hundreds of patients throughout Trinidad and Tobago. While he has supported the work of our party's national youth arm since 2013, he is qualified general dental surgeon with postgraduate certificates in dental implantology. He received his Doctor of Dental Surgery in 2005, his Bachelor of Law degrees in 2020, and is currently aiming to complete his Legal Practice Certificate in June of 2024. Dr. Citron is the owner and principal dental surgeon of Dental Plus Limited. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Citron has protected us from the lies, the incompetency of Dr. Rowley government, exposing them, forcing them into action. Dr. Citron is married to a dentist and has two sons. He continues to fight with the UNC on behalf of the people. Let's welcome to the stage the coolest man, Dr. Richie Citron, caring, loving, dedicated. Karen East, we love you. Thank you very much, Brenda and Ryan, for your opening remarks. My political leader and the next Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisesa, members of Parliament, Senators, local government representatives, and members of NATEX. We have the Karenese constituency. I'd like to thank them for the preparations here today. Activists, foot soldiers, and those viewing home and abroad, 
Welcome to the UNC Fortress of Karani East. My friends, we are here at the Ramunanan Road Government School, and it is packed to capacity both inside and outside. I would like to thank my political leader for having the vision to hold these cottage meetings at these smaller venues within the UNC constituencies so that we can reach you in your communities. As a cosmopolitan constituency, we have just celebrated spiritual Shouter Baptist Day, Good Friday, Easter Monday, and Pagwa. Eid ul Fitr is in a couple days, and I'd like to wish my Muslim brothers and sisters a safe and holy Ramadan period. Um, tonight, my friends, we will continue our discourse on our nation's healthcare system. But before I do that, I would like to first discuss crime. The front page of the Daily Express this morning had the headline, Fear Grips the City. Now, the city that they spoke about was Sport of Spain and gang violence and murders and the fact that the business groups are very concerned about this crime. But crime has also gripped Karanese. Homicide number 157 occurred last night at 9.30 p.m., just about five kilometers from this location. Akwi Passad, an elderly gentleman, was murdered at his home at Welcome Road North in Kunupia. During the home invasion at 9.30 p.m., he was shot in the head during this robbery, during which three assailants stole a certain quantity of cash from his house as well as the family's car. And my condolences to the family at this time. Now, what is very disturbing about this incident, my friends, is that he was shot and killed in front of his four-year-old grandson. That is how evil and devious these persons are. It took the police 45 minutes to reach the crime scene, by which time these perpetrators were well on their way outside of the constituency and are on the run. My friends, the family of Akwi Passad, and by extension those in Welcome Road are living in fear. They are living in fear. And how many more constituents and how many more citizens of Trinidad and Tobago must die under this key trial, the administration? We are all sitting ducks in our homes. The police service is under-resourced. There are not sufficient vehicles at the police stations for them to react to an emergency situation. They do not have sufficient guns. They do not have body armor in which to engage these criminal entities. Just talk, talk, talk from Keith Rowley and Fitzgerald Hines. As MP Arnold Ram said, the Minister of National Security is on record of saying that crime is not his issue. The Commissioner of Police doesn't know if she coming or going. The people of Trinidad and Tobago are under siege. And where are the community comfort patrols that was initiated under Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa? With these patrols, the criminal element did not know when a patrol may pass a certain area, and thus it broke up the activities. Currently, with all the patrols, these criminals know they have a certain amount of time in which to commit their crime and to escape free. So my friends, what is happening to our country? My political leader has already outlined many plans with regards to the security and safety of you, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. One of the major initiatives that Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bisesa wishes to initiate is that of Stand Your Ground legislation that will allow you to protect your family and yourselves in your home and not allow law enforcement and the judicial service to prosecute you after you have defended your home. Armed men meeting twice coming into a house knowing that there's an armed individual within that house. The granting of FULs, firearm user's license to those that may qualify will assist in this initiative. And the return of community comfort patrols will allow security personnel to guard your homes while you are there and while you are not. And this, of course, will throw off the criminals. A young boy, a very young boy, and apparently by all reports he's very traumatized, has lost his grandfather tonight. The community of Welcome Road North mourns 
the loss of one of their own. And we can no longer allow this to happen in Karenese. This government has shown it has a track record of over nine years of being unable to fight the criminal elements in Trinidad and Tobago. Prime Minister Keith Rowley is on vacation while all of this is going on. A Kamla Passad, the Cessa led government will return safety and security to our communities in Trinidad and Tobago. And my friends, um, moving on to the health sector, and I would like to engage in an issue that plagues Trinidad and Tobago, despite the billions that is being spent on the health sector in Trinidad and Tobago, and that is of health in inequity. Now, when a person gets a heart attack, and it's a person of means, be it in North Trinidad or South Trinidad, there are options. They can go to a private health institution, such as West Shore or St. Clair Medical, or perhaps um, Southern Medical Center, in which they can do an angiogram, which is a scan of your heart, and angioplasties. And these open up, opens up blockages in your heart and can often save these persons' lives. The days of a medicated response to a heart attack are long gone. Now, these procedures not only saves the person's lives, but allows them to continue working, you know, in a, in a very strong and a healthy way for the rest of their living days. This is an insignificant investment that we may make in Trinidad and Tobago. The number one cause of death in Trinidad and Tobago is heart disease. And just last week, we had very distressing news here in the United National Congress, whereby one of our colleagues was rushed to one of the newly built public hospitals when he experienced some level of discomfort in his chest. And this young man was placed in the emergency area of this brand new $1.6 billion hospital where he subsequent, subsequently passed and may his soul rest in peace. And my friends, with $1.6 billion for a new hospital, this hospital did not have the resources that certain private establishments within Trinidad and Tobago have to save this young man's life. He lost his life. So my friends, it did not have what we would call a cat lab. And the associated technical personnel that may run a cat lab. But we are spending $30 million a year for the next 15 years to pay for the Ministry of Health Administrative Building in Port of Spain. We are spending $450 million for that facility. The Eastern Regional Health Authority, the Southwest Regional Health Authority, and the Northwest Regional Health Authority do not have a cat lab. So if you get a heart attack in any of these areas and the ambulance takes you to these hospitals, they're just going to put you to the side and give you some tablets. The American Heart Association has certain protocols. And these protocols are within 10 minutes of the person arriving at the hospital, an EKG would be done. Within 30 minutes of that time, a diagnosis of a heart attack would be made. And within 60 minutes of arrival, the CAT lab team would go into, into their job. And within 90 minutes of arrival, that person's arteries would be opened up and their life would be saved, my friends. And the sum of these standards is called the 90-minute door-to-balloon rule. But 99% of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago cannot afford this at the private level. Only the richest of Trinidad and Tobago and certain politicians can do that, my friends. And this level of care does not exist currently in the public health care sector. So my friends, it will take a Kamla Passad Bicessa government to place a 24-hour fully functional cat lab in each of the regional health authorities. When our ambulance picks you up, you or your loved one, and they carry you to one of these billion dollar hospitals, you can feel rest assured that there will be facilities and the personnel there to save your life. Billions are being spent, but the number one cause of death in Trinidad and Tobago was not addressed, and that is heart disease. The UNC under Kamala Passad Bicessa will introduce nationally the 90-minute rule to our healthcare infrastructure, and the life that it may save may be yours. My friends, I have spoken at length, I don't have much time left, I have spoken at length about the chronic deficiencies in our healthcare service. 
I have spoken about the Simbanga report. I have spoken about the Special Auditor General's report. I have even spoken about the whistleblower that said there were 60 patients to one doctor during COVID-19. And nothing is currently being done by the government to address these concerns. And when, you know, when we ask questions why, as MP Khadija I mean, said, you know, they like to come with, you are not being patriotic. Why are you not patriotic? That is simply a case to muzzle you, to muzzle the opposition, but we will not stand for it. We will speak against waste and mismanagement. Where is the money going? All of these brand new hospitals for billions of dollars, it costs $70 million to build a cat lab. And in a $1.6 billion facility, you cannot put a cat lab? That is unacceptable. Reports are we are, we are under-resourced in every single hospital. The reports indicate that there are 40% of personnel that are not um, being hired in these hospitals. So how can the personnel there react when there are issues? They are understaffed, they are under-resourced, they do not have diagnostic equipment, they do not have basic drugs and supplies. And as I said before, these hospitals are white elephants. They are useless, they are troublesome. If they cannot save your life or heart attack, what is the point? My friends, according to the Special um, Auditor General's report, and this is a WHO study, our health sector will become more resilient going forward when new and existing facilities are adequately staffed and resourced. And this was, this was placed in Parliament, and the government is doing nothing about it. Doctors are suffering silently and they are, they are paying the brunt of all of these issues. I wanted to speak tonight about the head of the Trinidad and Tobago Cancer Society, Dr. Asante LeBlanc, and the issues that she raised with regards to the deficiency of cancer drugs and equipment and treatment, and the issues that cancer patients face in Trinidad and Tobago, but time is of the essence here. And you may ask, why don't doctors like Dr. LeBlanc speak out and that, my friends, is because of political victimization. They fear for their jobs, they fear for their careers. They have studied since they were small kids to be doctors to then go and lose their job as a consultant in a regional health authority. Gross political interference is penetrating our healthcare system and doctors have felt as if they have lost control of our country with regards to healthcare. Doctors are no longer able to guide our country through these very dark times. The eclipse that North America experienced over today in Trinidad and Tobago, we have had an eclipse for the last nine years, and that eclipse is Dr. Keith Rowling. My friends, my leader has built the Cuba Hospital, the San Fernando Teaching Hospital, and the Academy of Nursing and Allied Health. Uh, we, um, during her tenure, she has refurbished every single health center in Trinidad and Tobago, building human capital with people-centered development. I wish to remind you all that the quality of our lives was much better under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our children, our families, our grandchildren to take a stand against this key trolley administration. And I would like to tell my leader, Karen E. e. stands firmly with you, leader, political leader, Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Keep flying the flag of the United National Congress. Keep rallying around our leader, Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Long live our great party, I thank you. Like to find a solution to this pollution. Let's give it up once more for our hard-working member of parliament for the constituency of Karen East, Dr. Rishi Sicharan. And I want to tell you that Karen East has never suffered for quality representatives. In our presence, we have the former member of parliament, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, who was an excellent MP for Karen East. And in the crowd, my predecessor, former councillor Rana Pasad, who has stayed the course and has remained with us. In our midst, we have MP... Dr. David Lee, MP, Rudy Indar Singh, Dr. Lakram Bodo, I see MP, um, my good friend, Mr. Dave Tanku, any other MPs with us? MP Barry Padarat, who's also with us, and uh, obviously our MPs who were up here on the podium. Our next speaker is a human dynamo.
She works with us in La Hoca de Talparo. She belongs to us. And we have a big La Hoca de Talparo crowd here tonight. Let's give it up for LHT. Our next speaker has a track record of entrepreneurial and management excellence for over 25 years. She has served as a managing director of HDC, chairman of Udicot, CEO of the Pizza Boys Group, Minister of Transport, Tourism, and Tobago Affairs, Director of Vemcot, CEO of PTSC, and the Business Development Manager of the University of the West Indies, along with board memberships of, at TN Tech and YTEP. She's a chartered accountant, certified professional accountant, and certified management accountant. She holds an MBA from the Edinburgh Graduate School of Business and a Chief Executive Training Certificate from the National University of Singapore. She has been among a number of professionals recruited by the UNC government since 1997 who are mandated to turn around ailing state agencies enterprises. She is known in business circles as a high energy, innovative manager who burns the midnight oil to get projects done. A woman with a lifetime of service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, she has been on the ground for many years, spearheading numerous charitable and social projects over the years. Born in Tobago, she has walked many paths, but, have pointed, but all have pointed in one direction, the direction of development and service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Throughout her many years, one thing has always remained certain, her respect and belief in the UNC and its capability to transform Trinidad and Tobago into the first world nation we are destined to become. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome Senator Jolene John. Thank you, Chairman Ryan Rampersad. I almost didn't get up. I didn't recognize that person. But thank you for your kind words. I don't know what you're trying to get from me, but tomorrow you're still getting some cuss <laughs> when we meet. So, Honorable Kamala Prasad, Mr. Sir, leader of your position and leader of this great United National Congress, our host, constituency of Karunis, led by the brilliant beautiful, kind, and handsome MP Rishi Antra, <laughs> members of parliament. The LHT team is here supporting Karen East. UNC family, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. Why am I not surprised that there is such a large crowd here in Karen East tonight? That is the United National Congress led by Kamla Prasad Bissessa, senior counsel. This is how we roll. They feel that politics is a beauty context. They feel it's a beauty contest. But you have to work very hard. And it's hard committed work, as Ryan Rampersad will tell you. And you see how peppy Brenda John is. She's not my family, but she's moving as if she's my family. She's full of zest. You know. Under the stewardship of Kamla Prasad, Mr. Sir, the UNC is highly mobilized. And you have kept the faith even during the time in opposition. Think about what you will do with all of this energy in government. UNC is time we get into government. You are out here in your hundreds for Monday night cottage meetings, as you are here tonight. You generate a lot of excitement and buzz and interest in the anti-crime consultations. Thousands of our citizens showed up to the extent we had neither empty chairs or standing room. In fact, on occasion, we had to put up television on the outside. It is in light of that I ask if you are aware there's a role initiated National Advisory Committee on Constitution Reform. Um, MP Khadija Amin was talking about uh, the intrusion into our rights and independence. Yesterday in the, yesterday's Guardian, the chairman of the committee, Mr. Berenger Sinanan of Senior Council, appealed to members of the public to participate in the dialogue as he lamented the lack of mass support. He said, I was a little disappointed at the size of the audience, end quote. Now, with the greatest of respect, maybe the Lord is trying to tell him something. You, they probably have to ask KPB to endorse this reform consultation to get some people. I think God is trying to tell him something. You see, while they are murdering our children, our young little children in their beds, you would have heard every single speaker spoke about the murders because that is top of mind. 
The thing that is top of the C word that is top of mind is crime, not consultation. They are murdering our young children in their beds. They are murdering entire families, entire communities, invading and raping teenagers, daughters extorting and firebombing homes and businesses. Well, you heard MP Ram shed some light on some of that extortion. So I wait in a bated breath to hear who are these two ministers because that is all they do in that cabinet. They recuse. It have cabinet minister inside of that cabinet who don't know that he renting to himself. He said he doesn't know, right? And he feels that is not a conflict because he don't know. So he step out of himself to rent from himself. You know that is what they are carrying on with in that in that um, in that cabinet. And then Raul is straight face telling us that it has no co corruption. Of course, it has no corruption. I mean, you must know what to expect. And when it comes upon you, you have to be transparent and forceful to eradicate it. The way it came up with Bissessa with was that she almost fired half a cabinet. But I mean, as far as Ra I'm concerned with Rowley, Satan, Satan he, he can't deal with sin. You understand? Satan cannot correct sin. So it's, the game continues. You know, they're all doing what they want. So last night, so yesterday as a matter of fact, in between yesterday and today, on the 7th of April, one Kellen Benjamin, Aka Fish, was number 150. And that's what they, they are now numbers. I mean, one of our pre, um, previous speakers spoke about nobody cares. I mean, uh, MP Ram, nobody cares. There's no stirring. There's no complaint. There, there's no call to march. There's no call for no government to leave and go anywhere. Because Kellen Benjamin, Aka Fish, was only a number. He was 150 in Marabella. Tyrell Karim, Karim Aka Koki, he was number 151 out of Pinal. Shaquille Reed, he was number 152 of Beetham. Darren Young was number 154, he was Paul Porky of Faisabad. And Darren Doug Douglas was number 154, Aka Spooky of Port of Spain. So this is all across, and of course, MPC Chiran spoke about poor Mr. Passad there in his house robbing him. And as if that was not enough, somebody said, Give him something to the head. They were not giving him a, no, it was not a head rub. There was a sap in his head with a, with a little bear rum or oh, alcalado. They were hitting the, his gunshots and they killed that man. Killed him for what? For nothing. To add insult to injury. But they are busy consulting about reforming when the Constitution in Clause 4, they have told us we have a right to the protection. Where your protection? Where's the protection? You have a right to enjoy your property. Did Mr. Persad enjoy his property? They walked into his house and invaded his house and killed him there. So you tell me, what are they reforming? What are they reforming? What we need is already in this constitution. It's here. And they are not using it to do anything. Our lives mean nothing. So if clause 4 of the constitution, they mean nothing. Which clause they're going and put there? And you see the people trying to tell them something also. Nobody is showing up. Just like Shumfat said, nobody lives there. So they have nobody there, they're talking to themselves. And they will not abandon that mission. Then they invite them to Prasad Bissessor, and you will see, we got turned up. We'll show them our consultation. It's done. This morning express, fear grips the city, bracing for war. This was not part of Prince in Haiti they were talking about, you know. They were talking about Port of Spain, right there in, in, in Trinidad. This is something, this, I mean, we can't take this as normal. This is not normal. And you will see from the murder statistics of yesterday and so far today, the mayhem is nationwide. It is indiscriminate. It is picking and choosing. It's not for the rich or the poor. It's not for MP sitting here. It's for everybody. One day they're going to come in your house and they're going to give them one in the head. And it will not be a part. You're going to end up dead in front of a four-year-old grandchild. That is our reality. So tell them how well the government has been doing with your protection and safety, as I said, with the clause 4 of the Constitution. Rowley and his bunch must go. This chairman and them, they are sitting down telling you about reform. What we need is action. And we need to pack up these people and get them out of here. Too many people have died. Too much blood has been spilled. Too much children have been left off and too much grandchildren have looked at their grandparents lying dead in a pool of blood. We must take no more from this government. And I mean, MP Khadija, I mean, was talking about this thing, this um, EBC report that they are hiding. They're hiding it like Adam in the garden. But it ain't no matter. It ain't matter. They could put it, they could go on the highway to heaven in it. We're going to beat them. 
We are going to beat them. Be not afraid. With Kamla Prasad, Mr. Sir leading us, we are going to beat the PNM. Don't be afraid and all this get anxious and all this kind of thing. Just settle. Peace be still. La Hoketa Talparu is here. Right? The, the war machine. They are here. You understand? And nobody could work like them. And I promise La Hoketa tonight, after the GE of 2025, you are going to have your own representative in the lower house of parliament because of your hard work. So people are not foolish. People are not foolish. You have kept the faith and stood in the gap for single mothers when the PM, PNM took away the baby grant. For them is nothing. Them drinking cashew milk and almond milk and so on. But that baby milk grant was so important to nourish little minds and little bodies. And who who'd felt that was important? A woman of empathy, a woman of vision. Kamla Prasad Bissessa, they could say what they want. Kamla Prasad Bissessa leading us into victory in the next election. So some, so the young people, young mothers, some of them cannot afford the price of food because it has skyrocketed. Whilst con our conglomerates appear, appears to be running or competing in, in declaring bigger and bigger supernormal profits. Some policy experts see this, other issue. See other issues at work. Corporations, they claim, are increasing prices simply because they can. U.S. President Joe Biden last month warned that companies are ripping people off with a contribution of price gouging. He said with greed, greedflation and shrinkflation. He never said anything about inflation. He says it's greedflation and shrinkflation that have these people driving. So UNC, you stood against high food prices with your pots and pans. Do you remember that morning? We came out with our pots and pans. You would steer down, was up, led by our MP, MP Padarat and MP Tank, one of wonderful leader and MP Khadija Amin. And up to now, they cannot raise the prices, the rates in TN Tech and Wasa. But don't take your eyes off them you know, because they cannot be trusted. They are just waiting for the right opportunity and they are going to raise the prices. You marched in the rain against the increase in fuel prices while the government spokesperson laughed and they, ra they raised it up one time, two times, three times, four times. And then they dared you to riot because they want to test your patience. But monkey said, cool breeze. Monkey say cool breeze. One day you will have your time and you are going to riot with this index finger. I mean, some of us want to riot with the finger next to it, but it's okay. You'll have time to do that also. You gave solace and marched for justice for the families of the four divers they left without air in that pipeline. You marched around the petrochemical offices and then walked from San Fernando to Port of Spain in disgust and protest when they closed down Petrochemical. Because, it's not because you are personally losing anything, but you marched on behalf of all, all, all of those who at times would have lost their jobs when they callously closed down the doors of Petrochemical. Don't forget that. They sent home all of these people. You marched so the leader of the opposition could have stood in parliament on a motion against the closure of Petrochemical. That is what we do. We fight for people. We fight for their rights. We stand in their gaps. That is what our leader charges to do. We never sit still. We are always on that ground. And people could say what they want about us. They tell nobody like the United National Congress. That is why everybody is trying to fight for nobody. You see, what our opponents are good at is misrepresentation and lies. After nine years, it is all they have left. Nine years of your life wasted by this PNM government. Nothing to show. Now all they are doing is littering the landscape with a slab billboard. They're putting up billboard, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Just close your eyes and dream because 500 million gone and it's nada, jilts, nothing to show. Not one thing. You show me the hospital they built. Show me the house. You know how many houses we built? We built over 8,000 houses. I had a report here in the back. I go into houses tonight. That needed to hold 15 minutes. You understand? We repaired over 12,000 units in Port of Spain. And on top of that, the leader felt that was not enough. She said, Jolene John, give the people who have been living in HDC houses for over 30 years, those units on Prince Street, on Duncan Street, on Queen Street, in Tongue and everywhere else for $100. $100. You know what that would have meant? It doesn't matter the condition of that apartment. Right away, they would have had an asset in the heart of Tongue valued at about $2.5 million. When a week passed and the then Prime Minister did not hear from me, she called again. 
She said, where's the cabinet note? Where's the draft cabinet note? I said, madam, you're giving away tongue. She said, no, people need a stake in their country. If Kamla Prasad, Mr. So was Prime Minister from 2015 to now, crime would not have been where it is. It, there were jobs to everybody. There were opportunities to everybody. Everybody had a place in school. It had gate for everybody, scholarship for everybody. And that is what people need. They need an opportunity. That is the first fight, the first pathway in that fight against crime. But people have been left to suffer. And it doesn't matter, according to Rowley, who they're dead. That is his policy. So, UNC, tonight I know that you are very anxious to hear your leader. I will not speak about, you know, the fact uh, um, MP Lee spoke very expansively about the Dragon deal yesterday because you know Rowley and Stuart Young was only up and down flying and smiling and trying to fool us about this Dragon deal. All that smile now, I mean to say they must be just smiling as a Colgate commercial because they certainly can't smile about no Dragon deal. You understand? Because this woulda, coulda, shoulda, Willy Wonka government selling dreams false promises and fantasies, lies and enablers of recusal and corruption is what Rowley represented to China Tobago as resuscitating, revitalizing and saving the energy sector. The Sunday Guardian editorial of yesterday claimed his claims that his government had revitalized the energy sector is dubious. You hear what they say it is? Even the Sunday Guardian couldn't stomach what Rowley was saying. They say it's dubious. Petrochemical plants remain closed and the energy plants are operating well below capacity. That, my friends, is the truth. It is called facts. And there are not two sides to facts. There are stubborn things. It's either it is or it isn't. So, UNC, I know that you get tired and you get concerned and you get worried. They have no idea in terms of how to diversify the economy. I mean, them still chasing the drug, the big energy major, to go to their head office to find out if they could spend one billion US. So that is, that is a long time in, in coming. That geopolitics is between the UK, a boardroom in the UK, and Biden's White House in Washington, DC. We have absolutely no control over that. All this time, they sit down and beating a dragon to death. The first world countries, and some including Dubai and Singapore, they have gone with artificial intelligence because they feel that's the next, the next wave. You understand um, this piece of software called chat GPT? Because sometimes you call and you don't know who's talking to you. You, know? you feel it's a human. But it is all a software generated by artificial intelligence. You know? So there is where the rest of the world has gone. And this one that is leading the AI race is chat GPT. They are achieving 100 million users a week. So you see, Kampner said Mrs. was a woman of vision when she gave each child a laptop that was preparing you for chat GPT, right? All we have here in Trinidad are lies and crooks GPT. That is all we have, you know, with not a single idea except to beat a dragon to death. So we in the UNC will change that. We are not afraid of big ideas. We are not daunted by seemingly intractable challenges. We were built for this. We were built for this UNC, and we have not come this far only to come this far. We are going to win the next election. UNC, I know sometimes you get upset. Sometimes you get tired. You get anxious. And believe me, sometimes you hear the born again says, what is delayed is not denied. The time will come. Man, I know in the month of Ramadan, but I could get an amen. What is delayed is not denied. Let me get an amen. Right. And Taylor Swift, some of us are Swifties here. <laughs> Taylor Swift says, without all of the X's, fights and flaws, we wouldn't be standing here so tall. So stand tall, UNC. Stand strong, UNC. You keep the faith. Keep hope alive. I thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Got to find a solution to this evolution. Yeah. Got to find a solution to this
dedicate to yellow UNC the name of it is yellow please listen yeah they were all yellow I came along I wrote a song for you and all the things you do and it was called yellow Thank you, thank you. Before we are done, you will know every word of the song. And the name of it is? Remember the code is? Yellow. And you will learn every word. So next time we meet, I'll take the music off and you will sing. Agreed? Thank you. It's a beautiful song. A beautiful. Coldplay, look, you know the name. That's the name of the uh, band that sings it. I thought long and hard. I wanted a new song I could share with you that you would enjoy. I know you know I like reggae, I like rockers, I like um, soft pop, I like chutney, I like all kinds of music. But this kind of music I like is, is, is I think it's soft rock as well. It's called, is that it, Dr. Bodo? Let me ask somebody who really knows about music. Damien, Cole plays, what kind of music is that? So, Soft rock. It is soft rock, yeah. So I hope we'll enjoy it together. And um, that doesn't mean we won't have others, but I think it is very important that we remember who we are and what we are and what we stand for. And we are what? UNCN? UNCN? Proud. And of course, our code is yellow. Thank you all. Thanks to all of you. The chairman of the Kuva Tabaki Corporation, Councillor Ryan Rampasad, who is co-chairing tonight. Councillor Brenda John, co-chair. Let's give a round of applause. They've done a tremendous job. Let us also big up the speakers who came before me, MP Khadija Amin, MP Anna Ram, MP Dr. Rishi Sicharan, and maybe soon to be, now Senator Julian John, maybe soon to be, MP Julie John. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We have a screening committee. So I don't make the final decision. The committee will decide. And of course, the other MPs are here with us tonight. Let's see who is with us. MP Ratiram, MP David Lee, MP Indar Singh, MP Bodo, Doctor, MP, former MP, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh. Glad to have you in your own former constituency. MP Dr. Munilal, Senator Damien, MP Dave Tanku, MP Padarat at the back, and Rishi, of course, let's big up Rishi, we and Karani, Karani, Karani East. Other officials who are here tonight, councillors, all the men, 
And of course, all of you activists come out in your numbers. I'm sorry the school is too small. Next time when we're building, we will build some bigger schools. What do you think about that? <laughs> to our listening audience, viewing audience, radio, TV, social media, and all of you gathered, I say a very good night to one and all. And um, the speakers before me have been tremendous and very powerful. I think they're sensing it, they're feeling it, they're tasting it, they're touching it. You know what I'm talking about? Victory. Victory is in there. Victory is in there. So it's a pleasure to join you here. We've been off the Hustons for a bit. And because in the last several weeks, we were honoring the diversity that is our country. As we celebrated Shouta Baptist uh, Liberation Day, as we celebrated Holy Pagwa, as we celebrated Easter, and has been observing the holy month of Ramadan. So we've been very busy attending the various uh, festivities, celebrations, and observances. I recently attended several of the iftars. I saw Dr. Munilal with a nice headwear in a mosque somewhere, attending iftar. Many others have been there. And so we come out of a very, very blessed time in our nation's history. And in this holy month, whilst this is happening here and we have this tolerance or this working together, harmony in diversity, bomb after bomb, tons of stone, dust, seem to want to fall into our living rooms when we put on our TVs. And behind that, what are we seeing? We see murdered children, crying children, hungry children, Children strewn across the street like the debris they live in. How on earth can that be right? 32,000 people have been killed since October 2023. Thousands are now starving. 198 workers were killed. New apathy on top of recent apathy, on top of more than 50 years of apathy. Millions across the world have condemned this genocide that is taking place in Palestine, in the Gaza Strip. So millions around the world, millions across the world pray to Almighty Allah that world superpowers would come to their senses and apply pressure for an immediate end to this war against the innocent. Children who don't even know how to spell the word politics are sure that bombing the innocent is wrong. I want us all tonight to just take a brief moment and reflect on how blessed we are in this land. In other words, we are not blessed, but in this tolerance and religious diversity, we have a blessed nation living together in harmony. And I share this with you because as we move out of the month of Ramadan, we go into celebrating Eid on Wednesday. Our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza are suffering 32,000 persons killed in a wipeout, in a genocide. And our country has not said squawk or squat. Brothers and sisters are our own in Palestine. And our leaders in this land cannot say a word. Why? Why? Because they are lying to certain powers. And they are afraid. Oh yes, somebody just told me the, the answer. They have pip on such an important issue. Yes, we are talking about crime elsewhere, but that is not just crime, that is genocide. They are wiping out an entire community of people, a nation of people. So let us reflect and take a moment to reflect on how blessed we are to live in this constitutional democratic republic of Trinidad and Tobago, where so many different religions can celebrate their sacred holidays back to back and there is no disorder or religious conflict. We are a nation of great religious tolerance. Now, we may take this for granted, eh? but that is a very rare thing worldwide, you know. That is a great legacy of our foreparents. And we must never squander this gift of harmony and unity in our inspiring diversity. So as we prepare to celebrate Eid with our Muslim brothers and sisters on Wednesday, let us wish them 
uh, Eid Mubarak on that day, and of course, at the moment, Ramadan Burak for the next couple of days, but then we celebrate them on Wednesday. And that is a great thing that we can do in one month in our country, just within the space of a month, four major religious festivities. As I said, Pagwa, Shota Baptist Day, the Christians for Easter, and of course now with the uh, Muslim brothers and sisters. I moved to another point. When JJ stood up here and she told us there's not a beauty contest, I was trying to tell her, JJ, if there was a beauty contest, you would win it. But you didn't listen to me. <laughs> you didn't listen. I think if there were a beauty contest, the yellow would win. The code yellow will win. Thank you so much. But she's right. It's not a beauty contest. It is about what we can deliver, what we can look at from our track record. And based on that, you know we have a track record of the best that can be offered in our country. Khadija spoke about ABC report. The government has held on to that report, the 2024 report, for almost a month. They refused to lay it in Parliament. The report was submitted to the Prime Minister and the Speaker of the House by the EBC. Guess what? On what date? The 13th of March. I saw Madam Robinson Reggie saying, Kamala confused. Well, Madam, between the two of us, you are the one who is confused. I am very clear in my mind. I am very clear. I have the letter here with me from the ABC. The ABC sent me the letter, and the letter clearly said I'd written to them. I said, hey, listen, what's happening with this report? It's overdue. You have, within two years of your last report, and no more than five years, you have to lay that report. In March of this year, that five-year period expired. They did not lay the report, so I wrote to the EBC myself. Because the first duty is for the EBC to submit the report to the relevant authorities according to the Constitution, submit to the Speaker, and submit to the Prime Minister. As I said, I have that report um, letter here. They said they, sent, they submitted, the report is dated 13th March. And that report was submitted on the 13th of March to whom? Prime Minister and Speaker. So what foolishness can we come in out to say with that it's going to be the acting Prime Minister? It was on the 13th of March, your Carol was in the country. He left the country on the 2nd of April. Left on the 2nd, you hear lie, boy, they are just... Lie, cry, and mama guy. That's the PNM. Lie, cry, and mama guy. Lie, cry, and mama guy. So this big woman, MP, who is uh, the leader of the government's business in the house, a very important, responsible position. We had people holding that. Dr. Muni Lal held that position. MP David Lee is now holding on the opposition side. Very important position that you must know what's going on in the parliament, what has to happen. So the constitution gives us our timeline. I spoke about the suppression of the report, holding the report, hiding the report on the 18th of March. EBC submitted when? 13th March. On the 18th, in a debate in the parliament, I said, where's this report? Why don't you lay the report in Parliament so that everybody, all parties, elections are coming, everybody will know the boundaries. Because see, those reports can come at the last moment and surprise everybody and shock you. So when you think you're going to fight the seat of Karani East here and the boundaries are X, Y, P, and Q, they could shift those boundaries. They have done it before. They have done it in St. Joseph repeatedly where they shifted Strong UNCPDs out of St. Joseph, put them somewhere else where they wouldn't make a difference, and then pulling the PNMPDs into St. Joseph, making St. Joseph now a true marginal. It was a UNC seat because they shifted the boundaries. So you see why that report is so important that we, in prepping, in even choosing candidates, I may choose a candidate today. And then the boundaries have changed, and that is not a proper candidate for the screening committee to, to put in a seat. So we need to see the report. So I raised it. And then now, nothing happened. So I wrote the EBC, as I told you. 
And they said, listen, we have complied with our constitutional duty. We submitted the report on the 13th of March to both the Speaker and the Prime Minister. Okay. After that now, the Parliament met since the 13th of March, understand this, eh? On at least three occasions. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> After the 13th March. So, Prime Minister has this hand. Speaker. Parliament met when? Friday, March 15th. The 15th is when? After the 13th. <laughs> Meaning after they got it. <coughs> the Parliament met again. Monday, March 18th. The Parliament met again. Friday, March 22nd. And at no time, three sittings after, did the government ever admit that they had the report, nor did they lay it in Parliament. It was only after I wrote to the EBC and I threatened legal action that an order paper surfaced. I said, Camille, if you don't know the order of business in the Parliament, you better go and check your email, because I got my email. This is the order paper. It is dated when? Friday, 5th May. April. Friday, 5th April. That is Friday, Friday, Friday. Just when? Okay? So we got this order, people. And what is the number one item on the order, people? 24th. <coughs> 2024 report of the EBC on the review of constituency boundaries. On the hand name of Deputy Speaker. This is the order paper for the sitting of the 12th of April, which is Friday, and paper to be laid, the EBC report, only after we call them out. Friday night, I got this, you know, David, when did you get yours? F Friday night, MPs, when did you Friday night. So maybe Camille and Faris were both sleeping, and they wake up the next day, you know, and they didn't know that there's an order paper. What was their, no yes, it's a shameless, because she said I had the unmitigated something, something, and I'm confused and nonsense. Well, you, madam, spoke absolute rubbish, total rubbish. And also, so did Faris Alrawi. So they didn't even know the order paper was issued. This item was in the order paper for laying on Friday, okay? Now, that's fine. So Friday we go on the 12th. The report will actually be laid. We'll actually get to see it. We just know that they're going to lay it. And then we'll be able to deal with the issues there. But it doesn't end there. They have to now set a date for the report to be debated in the parliament. They have to set a date so we can examine this report and look to where they seek to gerrymander the boundaries in compliance with the EBC. They did it before you remember the THA. When they get almost wipe out in TH, what did they do? They increased the number of seats. Yes, from 12 to 15. They changed the boundaries and they still get wiped out. So they could try to gerrymander, but once you keep firm and you keep strong, we will get a victory. We will win. We will win. So boundary or no boundaries, we must do our work. We must campaign and we must be out there and educate persons as to what is happening. So this raises a very serious question. Apparently, like Camille and Faris didn't know that Rowley got the report. So one thing Rowley hid in it because he got the sense the 13th, okay? He left the country when? 2nd second, second, second April, or so he told us. Um, so he had this report from the 13th. But both Camille and this girl, um, Faris, Faris, no, no, that, I, I apologize. That was a mistake. It was a mistake. I apologize. No, that was not delivered. It was not delivered. Please, please, not delivered. Both this girl, Camille, and Faris, um, in the same news day, they, they, they don't know. They just don't know. So, two things. Raleigh didn't even tell his own cabinet colleagues that he got this report. Or maybe he's deliberately hiding it, or maybe he was also sleeping and didn't, didn't open his mail to get the report. Very serious issues. I remind you of the 6-6 six, six deadlock in the THA. And um, I then said, when we did that debate, and I quote my own words from the Hansard of September 15, 2021, when we were debating the EBC report about the Tobago boundaries, THA. 
I quote, if the EBC is going to make up its own rules as to how it determines boundaries, then we on this side are not afraid to say that both the EBC and the PNM administration are undermining the rule of law and the democracy of our land. <laughs> Political analyst Professor Hamad Gami noted in his Guardian column, published Sunday, March 31st, after, and I quote, St. Joseph, was significantly altered in 2004, in time for the 2007 general election. It became a true marginal. In its 2004 report on the review of constituency boundaries, DBC moved polling divisions 1045 and 1060, which were reliably PNM into the St. Anne's East constituency, and moved them and placed them where? in St. Joseph, in St. Joseph. Let me remind you that in the past eight years, coincided with this government's tenure in office, the EBC has also established highly questionable reputation for acting arbitrarily and outside the rule of law in several other electoral matters. You recall that we had to take them to court on several occasions and the EBC was found to have acted arbitrarily. If the Rowley government has once more, in this latest CBC report, which we see on Friday, you, if they've used, the PNM has used this influence to cause and to collude with EBC to gerrymander and manipulate the boundaries to enable a PNM win in the upcoming elections, this will be totally a contra our constitution and breach of our constitution, in violation of our constitution, and the UN will mount the legal challenges that we can with respect to this, I give you that assurance. Once we see that report, we will not lie down and take it easy. We are all a bit younger and older and very much smarter now, much, much smarter. We will not leave them alone. We will not. So I'm calling the government to fix a date for, a report, for that report to be debated in the parliament at the earliest opportunity. Instead of doing their duty, I say this government Repeatedly, what do they do? They lie, they cry, and mama guy. Coming back to JJ, and, and, and I think um, Kiddisha spoke on it to the Constitutional Reform Committee. JJ, you said you should invite me to get people to come. I will not go. I am of the view that the entire commission is a mama guy, a papi show, a ploy, okay? And therefore, I have no intention of giving it any legitimacy. We will not go. I want you to remember the amount of um, committees this government has set up. Yes? Committee after committee after committee. That's what they do. And um, they have a track record of what they call sham committees. So anytime something happens, what do they do? They set up a committee. And then you all forget. They think we forget. But I know some people forget. So they set up committee after committee. Can I tell you, since they came into office, they have set up about at least 37 committees. 37 committees. And, and, and that's what comes out of them. And not just committee, commission of inquiry. What has happened to the inquiry for the divers? What has happened with that? So many other committees. Let me share some with you. So that's why I'm saying this constitutional reform committee will get nowhere fast. I believe they're going to use whatever punchlines they get out of it to put in their PNM manifesto to practice their manifesto. You remember the roadmap to recovery? That is what they use for their manifesto and up to date, not one car drive on that road. Not one thing has been implemented. Nothing has happened. Roadmap to recovery. Come back again. Mama Guy committees. This latest gimmick government has imposed on the population. JJ mentioned it. Imagine you go to the capital city of Trinidad and Tobago, Port of Spain. You know how many people attended? 21 persons on a Friday evening. Capital city, 21 persons attended. Not even their own PNM councillors or activists attending these things. Everywhere they go, there was another place they went and they got 37, if I'm not mistaken. So this is going nowhere. 
they don't intend for it to go anywhere except to come on a platform and say, we will do this. We will implement this, this, this and that. Vote for me and this is what we will do. It's not going to happen. And I'm going to warn you now, the UNC will never at this time vote to abolish the Privy Council. Not at this time. I do not trust this government. We will not support that. And I have a serious matter with them, you know. The chairman of this uh, Constitution Reform Commission appeared on a radio program recently. And while a chairman holding a consultation has to keep a neutral ground. You don't give your view. We all have views. But if you're chairing, what were you there to do? You were there to listen to the points that people were bringing forward, to listen. And on that radio program, the chairman openly endorsed abolishing the, uh, the people who so openly. So you make up your mind already. You Trump and foreign suit for, for, um, AG, who is his name now? Amo or Limo. You Trump and Limo say, move the Privy Council, abolish it, go to the CCJ. And the chairman, can you imagine that? You cannot be chairing and you have already made up your mind. So I would ask the government to reconsider. And I'll ask that chairman, I know he's a very decent human being, the chairman, respectable, decent lawyer he is. I think he knows what he has to do. He has to recuse himself. He has to recuse himself. So we are back to these um, Mama Guy committees, okay? So a puppy show, a charade, a gimmick, eight years on, going into nine. Nothing has come of them. I mentioned to you the roadmap to recovery. 2020, had the election 2020, you all remember? Nothing happened from that up to today. The constitution reform gimmick, as I said, will base their campaign, they will base it and place it in their manifesto. So I said about 37 committees and inquiries in eight years. Nothing has happened. Here are some of them and you will remember and you will add others to them. October 2015, they set up an economic development advisory board. By 2018, its head, Dr. Terence Farrell, had quit. He said they had a lack of resources and a lack of projects, pro a lack of progress. Remind me, isn't Dr. Terence Farrell also on this Constitution Reform Committee? We're going over fast, spinning top in mud. January 2016. Early Childhood Education Review Committee. What has happened with that? Nothing. Nothing has happened from that committee. June 2016, Sandals Project Committee. March 2017, Committee to Investigate Petrotrin Operations. What became of that? Nothing out of that committee was ever done or implemented. You know why? They never said to shut down Petrotrin. Never said to shut down. Talked about restructuring and then VAPS. Like a thief in the night. While you were opening and closing your fridge door. All, all, all went out of Petrotrin. All, all, all. Gone. Gone up to this day. Committee to investigate Petrotrin operations. Then, July 2017. Cabinet appointed committee to oversee hunting in Trinidad and Tobago. Maybe the hunters were acting up at that time. So as I said, once noise started to make, committee. Put a committee, everybody shut up. A few months later, move on, on, moving on. August 2018, committee established to address street dwelling. That's 20, what, 18, you know. What has happened with that? Nothing. June 2019, Technical Committee appointed for the National Social Mitigation Plan. And today, where is that mitigation? So many people are starving. So many people can't afford to buy food. Children can't afford to get books, shoes. You can't get anything. Social amenities in this country. You set up that committee since 2019. We are now in 2024 on social, National Social Mitigation Plan. And now PS people are suffering more than ever. August 2019, committee established to evaluate refinery bids. 
another puppy show, another lie and cry and mama guy to, to, to evaluate refinery. But it's up to today, what has happened? How many years later? Petrotron is now what? Scrap iron. Scrap iron. Since 2019, you set up this committee to evaluate bids. Nobody came forward. Not true. I remember once um, in Parliament, one minister told us they had received about 32 bids, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. What has happened? September 2019, TN Tech Committee to probe Tobago Black Hawk. Barry, what happened? They're still probing? They're still probing TN Tech Black Hawk in Tobago from 2019 to today because we got nothing back from that committee. April 2020, probe into employers who don't sign social relief forms. What became of that? Nothing. July 2020, this is just before the August 2020 election, July 2020. Committee to probe depressed communities after protests. Well, the communities are even more depressed now than they were then in, in 2020. Again, fooling people, like Ryan Mamagai, fooling people, election coming. Hey, we set up a committee to look after depressed communities. Nothing happened. November 2020, committee to guide government on port privatization. Another lie, cry, and mama guy to make you feel something is happening. Nothing has happened. 2021, Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. You know, this, you know, this thing, the more you read it, the more jokey gets it. Up. Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. But I will remind me, there was a, a ministry that set up. What was the name of it? Digital track. When we check the website for that ministry, <laughs> yes, but then we check again. I think they had two people. I don't know how many they have none, but I said there's still none. So, Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. My God, you hear lie? More lies, more and more lies. Say lie, cry, and mama guy. April 2021, probe into Nikon blast. They believe what has happened with that probe. Still probing. Still probing. November 21. Cabinet appointed committee to discuss credit union sector's future. What has happened with that? Again, nothing. February 22. Committee to probe cause of a national response to island-wide power outage. Barry, what happened with that one? You remember the whole country blackout? They set up a committee and up to now, they're in the dark, they black out. They're in the dark, they're still in the dark about what happened. They're in the dark. And what about the Daryl Smith report of 2019? Yeah. They sent him away. Well, they get rid of him. They sent him abroad, I'm being told. Daryl Smith report 2019. I mentioned the Nikon blast report. What about a committee appointed to probe the press communities? I mentioned it, nothing. So all of this, and I mean there are more, there are over 37, and you may know some yourself. Um, <clears throat> I'm saying their track record is abysmal, dismal. Their track record is a zero, nada, zilch, nothing. So every time you set up committees, nothing happens. And this is going to happen with this Constitution Reform Committee. It's another pathetic PR gimmick. We'll just waste public funds in an effort to distract from the real issues confronting people in our country. Another propaganda stunt to involve the colonialism bogey. And they're saying, look, look, let's get rough this up. Because you know why? That's colonial and stuff. Let me ask you something. You may not know this. Two presidents of the CCJ had to be admitted as counselors to Her Majesty's Privy Council before they took up the job. So why they didn't, why you want to get rid of the colonials? Why are you taking Privy Council status from these people before you went to sit in the CCJ? I won't even speak to that, so I will not call the names. But it's a kind of hypocrisy and double standard that the country must get rid of the Privy Council, but these fellows had to go and get themselves on the Privy Council before they became members of it. You know who was a great person who did it? A former Prime Minister of Jamaica. His name was P.J. Patterson. He actually resigned. 
because he had his strong feelings about the colonial roots and colonialism. So again, I come back, lie, cry, and mama guy, the double standards that this government keeps propagating. A general election is coming. We know that. We know that when you see the start now coming to pave road, I want to give out house, all these things to fool you again. As I always tell you, whatever they give you, take it. But when you go in that voting booth to vote, only you and your God knows where you put that X. And if I had to tell you and remind you, you put your X next to the rising sun. Next to the rising sun. Don't get fooled up this time. Don't get chained up. They will come with all kinds of promises now. And again, after you vote for them. So guess what? JJ mentioned it. Barry talks of it all the time because he's our public duties shadow about the increase in the water rates, the increase in tea and tech rates, right? And the holding and the holding. How Barry puts it, he said, wait, dirty, wait. Wait, dirty, wait. So they say, no, well, 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 hold, hold, hold. And the day you put them back in office, everything will rise. Don't get fooled, don't get chained up. Property tax too. The property tax too. So they're saying from September, right? Property tax. Something curious happened, or curious, curious, Damien, in the parliament. They came to the parliament with the property tax to say they're decreasing it from 3% to 2%. So they gave the minister in birth a power in that same law that he could vary that at any time. You know what vary mean? Change it. You think he coming to change it down? He going to do what? Change it up. Don't get chained up. And then he told the parliament, he says that he will put a ceiling of 10%. This happened in the parliament. I'm sorry tonight, Kevin had a little computer problem because we had the video, but we'll put it out on the social media. He told the Senate that he will phase it, not out, phase it in, and he'll cap it at 10%. So don't get you up, he come to give you a bligh. Say, I'm taking it from three to two. But guess what? I have a power now to phase it. And I'll cap it at 10%. Yes, Tim? He, yes, and now he doesn't have to come back to Parliament to raise it again, eh? Or to drop it. He doesn't have to come to the full Parliament, no. He gave himself that power within that last piece of law that he changed. So I said, general election is coming. Every party is out there on the hustings. Hundreds of thousands of you will soon get to vote. We in the UNC have been reporting to you. That is no secret. We have been right here like an open book in front of you, week after week, month after month, year after year. We have been giving you the plain truth and nothing but the truth without dressing. You already know what we have been campaigning on. You know it because you've all seen and lived it. We've been campaigning, as I say, on the simple truth. Whether you have a road or not, whether thousands of young men are being driven to murder or being murdered, whether young women are being raped and battered or not, whether it will flood by you soon, wash away your belongings or not, whether you are happy with your quality of life or not, whether the healthcare system is serving you well or not. And Dr. Rishi gave us some really startling information here tonight with the healthcare system. This is how we have been campaigning all these years. I dare anyone in this country to tell me we have not relentlessly told you the complete and transparent truth about everything affecting your life, your daily lives. Our campaign has been simply about the plain truth. We tell it from a podium with a backdrop, some lights, a few plants, and a hole. No big production, no cosmetics to cover stuff up. We campaign on the plain truth that you have been living and seeing with your own eyes. I want to remind you of the truth you know and what we have been campaigning on. We provided the best personal safety and security you've ever had. We delivered the best GDP ever. We delivered the best foreign direct investment ever. We delivered the best forex system ever. 
We gave you the best universal health care ever. We delivered the best education resources in the history of our country, thanks to the help of Dr. Tim Gopi Singh then with us in Parliament. I said we gave you the best health care then, thanks to Dr. Boda of the Southwest, thanks to Dr. Fuad Khan, our Minister of Health. <clears throat> we gave you the best roads you ever had. We have had the best energy policies, thanks to Minister Kevin Ramnarine, former Minister of Energy. And of course, quite around here, Ramadar Singh also helped us a lot in the energy sector. Um, we gave you the best sporting policies, thanks to then Minister Anil Roberts. We gave you the best sporting, as I say, stadium resources. We delivered the best wage resolutions ever in this country, thanks to MP Indar Singh. They can't settle any wage negotiations now, but we settled, how much is it? 143. 143 wage negotiations we settled when we were in government. As I said earlier, we are going into an election. You as voters have one main question. It is, why should I vote for you? And my answer and our answer is very simple, honest and true. The UN will make sure you live your best life after the election. You live your best life. And that is what everybody wants, is to live their best life. And I tell you tonight, the UNC is your best life guarantee. Only under the UNC are you guaranteed the best life. The PNM will campaign on what? Lie, cry, and mama guy. Don't get chained up and don't get fooled, I ask you. I intend to speak about crime today, but I, several of my colleagues have spoken. But we know the situation is horrendous. And the Prime Minister persists with this clueless, hopeless Minister of National Security. We see all the headlines, and we have plans as well to give you a safer Trinidad and Tobago once you cast your vote to put the UNC into government. So we've been sharing some of those plans. I will do it another day and repeat. Ours is now using extortion. I think Arnold Ram MP spoke a bit about this. Criminals are using arson in addition to murder as a means of extorting business people. Multiple times the issue of extortion has been raised by myself, by others, and the business community. The crime continues to increase daily with no action being taken by government. The Express Editorial, 5th April, sorry, Express Editorial, the 4th April, headline, Arsonists Adding to Crime Fears. Arsonists Adding to Crime Fears. That editorial sums up this new terror. I quote from that. Yesterday morning's fire at HSM Marketing Company Limited follows an arson attack that killed two people in Coval. These two follow last November's mystery blaze at the licensed office headquarters in Kearney. In each of these, it appears the fires were deliberately started, adding fire bombing to the criminal, criminal methodologies that have wrapped TNT in a tight grip. Again, the government has lost control of security in this country. Criminals are locking people in their homes, burning them to death. And again, why is nothing being done? Why is the government protecting criminals and not law-abiding citizens? Guns for criminals. Guns for criminals, you know. But when we say give guns to law-abiding citizens, they say no. But the criminals out there with the guns terrorizing your life. Again, mama guy for law-abiding citizens. I just want to share one more thing when we deal with the um, national security architecture in Trinidad and Tobago. Murder and extortion, they continue. Crime at high sun. I think MP Ram told me it was about 155 murders as of last night. Maybe by today, I hope not anymore to add to that list. The SSA scandal will only get bigger. The information that has come to me is incredible. Hines and Rowley cannot escape responsibility for this scandal. 
The government has hijacked the SSA equipment. They have given it to operatives in the TTPS to do their bidding. There's an article in the Trinidad Guardian, March 26. As the probe into SSA continues, TTPS spy units operation challenged. Again, this is the Guardian of March 26. I quote from that. As the probe into the SSA intensifies, focus is now being turned to another spy unit, this time one operating within the TTPS. I'm quoting still. The unit known as the Research and Analytical Unit reports only to the special branch and falls under the remit of the Minister of National Security. It is headed by one Corporal Brent Clement. Remember that name, I'll come back to it in a second. Corporal Brent Clement. The article continues, the RAU, which is equipped with cameras and intercept equipment, is heavily supported with training and equipment by a foreign government, sources reveal. Continuing, sources noted that there was friction between the RAU's Clement and suspended SSA director best over roles and functions of both entities. Now, a couple of years back, I raised this name, Corporal what? Um, Brent, not Thomas, Brent Clement. Brent Thomas is another fiasco by itself. Um, Corporal Brent Clement. Okay, let me find back the next story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tuesday, 26 April 2022. Headline Kamala to the Prime Minister. Clarify new claims of predator spyware. Article in the Newsday. I quote my words reported in that paper in 2022. Almost two years ago, April 2022. Opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bissessas challenged the Prime Minister to get his story right, saying every time he speaks about Israeli created spyware Pegasus designed to hack computers and mobile devices to retrieve citizens' data, he contradicts himself. The story continues. She also questioned the landing of an Israeli plane during the lockdown of our borders and the purpose of its passengers, who, she said, never left these shores. Never left, huh? at that time they, had, they landed here. Israeli plane, passengers never left. This is back in 22, I'm saying this. She linked their presence with a two-day cyber software, malware, and interception training event for members of the security forces handpicked by the PNM. She again called on Heinz to explain the role of a PC Clement, same fellow, Brent Clement, in the interception of communications under the amended act of 2020 which was passed with a simple majority in spite of objections. This is the same officer Clement about whom I alerted the country in 2022 and he's now exposed again in 2024. In 2022, Rowley claimed that the illegal spying was false. We hear about cry, lion, mama guy. It was false and here they are exposed. Two years later, they have begun fighting amongst themselves. The truth has been exposed and I am proven to have been correct. The truth came out regarding the spy union within the TTPS. Eventually, you know, the courts will have to decide on these matters. While I told the country the truth about the illegal spying by this government in 2022, many fell for the PNM's lie, cry, and mamagai and didn't believe it. Now in 2024, all is being exposed. Final point, and I couldn't let this pass because I'm a lawyer. And I have a great respect for the rule of law as being the foundation stone of a democracy and of freedom and rights. The judiciary, the judiciary, the Supreme Court is the guardian of our constitution. They have a constitutional duty to uphold rights. And the government has been undermining our democracy. The Prime Minister himself launched a dangerous attack on the judges of our country. Every constitutional republic 
including ours, is governed by a principle known as the separation of powers. Remember these words, separation of powers. This ensures that state power is not concentrated in the hands of a few. This ensures that state power is distributed and not concentrated in the hands of a chosen few. The arms of the state are supposed to act as a check and balance of each other. So parliament makes the laws as one arm of the state in the separation of powers. The judiciary interprets and enforces those laws. The executive, which is the government, they administer these laws. The judiciary's role is to resolve disputes, including those between individuals and against or for the state. The courts have a very important role in limiting abuse of power by government. Any responsible government has a duty to accept the court's rulings and to stay within the law and respect rights. So I was very concerned. The Prime Minister's recent statement, as reported in the Newsday on 27 March, under the headline, Rowley, Judge Went Overboard in criticism, Criticisms of the Commission of Police. Judge Went Overboard. That report quotes Prime Minister Rowley as chiding, and I quote, activist judges who act as though they could make policy and guide public servants on what to do. That statement was given in relation to a recent judgment by the High Court in a matter brought against the Commission of Police over a businessman's seven-year wait to obtain a firearm user's license. Since then, one High Court judge anonymously has publicly stated that the Prime Minister's comments were odd and inappropriate and that there was no trespass into the role of the Executive or Parliament by the judge in question, offering suggestions for review of policy. Now, you may think this is not important to you until one day you end up in a courthouse and the long arm of this government reaches in that to decide a case for you or against you. We must leave the judiciary to their job. And when you don't agree with the judgment, what do you have? You have the appeal court. And after that, God willing and thanks to the UNC, you could go to the Privy Council. You could take that to the Privy Council. So if you don't like the judgment, don't cuss the judge. Don't attack the judge. You have a next step. You can appeal. And then, thanks to the UNC, you can appeal again to the Privy Council. So there could be restrained and respectful disagreement with the judge's ruling. That's okay. But frontal, crusp, and unsubstantiated verbal assaults in the public domain will only undermine confidence in the administration of justice. A judge should not be labeled as an activist simply because he makes respectful suggestions. He's decided a matter against the state. As I said, you could always appeal. What is even more worrying in this matter is the fact that the Prime Minister said that it is a cabinet. Mr. Rowley, I know your, um, your, your AG really is a limo. He don't really know the law. And you fired your last AG, maybe you know why. But you don't know the law, so you better get some lawyers. Let me advise you. Your comment is totally wrong in law. The Prime Minister said that it is a cabinet that sets the policy for the granting of firearm user's license. The Prime Minister said, the same day buffing up the judge, he said, it is a cabinet. Boy, will that get me real frightened. That really is frightening. When is the cabinet could decide I'm giving you, or giving you, or not giving you, I don't like your face. And you see you, you're wearing yellow, sorry, none for you. None for you. Dangerous statements made by the Prime Minister. He does not understand the law. Prime Minister, go and look at the Firearms Act, Chapter 1601 of the Firearms Act, where in Section 17 of the Act, it states very clearly, it is the Commissioner of Police who has the sole discretion to issue a firearm user's license. So if it is that you now tell any Commissioner what to do and not to do, and if some people believe Gary Griffith, Gary said that they were trying to influence him, uh, in terms of who to give and not to give and so on. But it is clear in law, it is the Commission of Police who has the sole, the only discretion to issue FULs. Tonight, I ask Mr. Rowley, 
Are you now alluding to an unspoken arrangement between the government and the commissioner of police in which the government has a say as to who gets these licenses? I call on the police commissioner to clear up any doubts since the independent independence of that supposedly independent public office is now in question. Commissioner, please clear up this statement made by the Prime Minister. You are the functionary, you are the person. Come out and say no. Come out and say no. As I close, we miss you all for a little bit when we were off on the other things, um, this one-to-one -one interface. So I'm sure you missed us too. And we intend to continue next week. We shall be in the Maruga Tableland constituency on the 15th. And thereafter, we will be in um, Princess Town on the 22nd. So those are our meetings as we go forward, and we'll advise you of the others. As you know, um, nominations for general elections closes on Wednesday, the 11th of Thursday. No, I have Wednesday in my brain because I want to speak about Wednesday. Thursday, 11th, OK? Um, Wednesday, the 11th. Wednesday, the 10th is Eid. It's a public holiday. So you, you will not be able to come to the office on that day because we respect our religious holidays. So I want to just advise, take notice, and I'll ask the General Secretary Chairman to please put it up on all our groups on Facebook and so on. We will extend the hours on Tuesday, Tuesday, which is tomorrow, Tuesday to 6 p.m. Wednesday, we observe the Eid celebrations. And Thursday, the 11th, we will extend the hour to 6 p.m. Did I get it clear? So we're dealing with tomorrow, Tuesday. We are celebrating Eid on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we extend the hours for the filing of nominations. So please take notice that that will apply. So as I said before, we have listened to you. We have heard you. And now as we go into this election, there is only one way to say what you have all asked for again, I say it. The UNC will make sure you live your best life after this election when you put us in government. A vote is to put your life in the hands of politicians, and that is no joke. No voter wants to put their life in the hands of someone who doesn't care about them. People have done that. Those who voted for Rowley and the PNM put their lives in Rowley's hands. But instead of nurturing the life they put in his hands, what did he do? He washed his hands of them. As I say, look at Petrotra and wash hand. Look at the education sector, wash hand. Look at roads and drainage, wash hand. Look at national security, wash hand. Look at workers, 4%, wash hand. So instead of loving, nurturing, and growing, Rowley washed his hands of you. He has washed his hands off you. So now you will breathe a sigh of relief. You will put your life in the hands of truth and put your life in the hands of care and put your hands, your life in the hands of joy and put your life in the hands of those who love you and always will. I have told you and I repeat it till the day I die. You have had leaders before me. You will always have leaders after me. But you will never, ever have a leader who loves you as much as I do. Thank you and God bless. Go home safe. Thank you. So who feel the black? Who feel the white? I don't know. Shut in the morning. Who feel the wrong? Who feel the right? Come and go. And all who feel the too bright. Let me jump up. Let me wave up.